So by the time this video is done, Ethereum will have probably completed the London fork. So what is a fork and why is London fork significant to the Ethereum network? So Ethereum as a cryptocurrency needs no introduction. And as a cryptocurrency itself, it has grown from 1,003 in January 2021 to almost 2,600 today. And earlier this year, Ethereum 2.0 was launched to move Ethereum mining from a proof of work to a proof of stake. So in proof of work, miners will require hardware to solve cryptographic puzzles to verify and create new blocks onto the blockchain. And by supplying computational power to the network, miners get rewards for each block that they mine. So the faster the miners can solve a puzzle, the faster they can move on to the next block and start solving more puzzles and earning more rewards. But here comes the problem. Proof of work is an energy consuming process by design. And the more miners you own, the more hash rate you can produce, the faster you can solve puzzles. And this caused a price of GPUs to go insanely high because Mining rigs consist mostly of a CPU chip and 6 to 8 GPUs per unit. And with better and faster GPUs, the chances of a miner solving a puzzle increases as well. And this causes two things. One, environmentally bad because the increases of electricity. And two, many of these GPUs well after a certain lifetime and it probably goes to waste. And on top of that, to get more hash power or computational power, mining pools are created to combine mining rigs from different parts of the world together and start solving puzzles. And that brings us another problem of the 51% attack. And as you know, the blockchain network is decentralized and there are nodes everywhere in the world verifying creating new blocks to support the network. But when a centralized body gains more than 51% of a network, it can start verifying malicious blocks or even reverse transaction causing a double spend and thus causing the network to lose its integrity. That is why Ethereum is moving towards a proof-of-stake model. So in a proof-of-stake model, instead of having miners, we will have validators instead. And instead of solving puzzles, these validators will be randomly chosen to approve and verify transactions on the network. And because they own a certain number of tokens, they have a certain number of authority as well. So in Ethereum 2.0, to become a node or a validator, you require 32 ETH. And I got no idea why is it 32, but that's a pretty significant investment. That's roughly about 80,000 USD right now. So validators replace miners and they do get rewards for validating transactions. And by logic, that the bleh. And by logic, validators will have no benefit for validating a malicious block because if that happens, the prices of the token falls and so does the value of that investment. So why is the London Fox so important? So the London fork will do the following. The base gas fee per block will become dynamic. It will adjust according to the block sizes to deal with congestion on the network. And the base fee per gas will be then burned. And miners will no longer receive transaction fees as it will be burned by the Ethereum network. In turn, the miners will receive block rewards without transaction fees. And when you execute a transaction on the ETH network, you can put in an optional tip for the miner and he can then decide to prioritize your transaction instead of others. So this fork will also delay the difficulty time bomb for Ethereum to December 2021. So it gives miner time to smoothen out their incomes before increasing the difficulty on the network. And with this, miners who are less efficient will ultimately drop out from the race because they are unable to provide enough hash rate to the network and slowly pushing Ethereum towards a proof of stake model. So all this might sound very technical right now, but I think the important part of this video is here. It's how is it going to affect me and you or people that hold Ethereum. So after the London fork, the next upgrade will be merging the Ethereum mainnet to the Ethereum beacon chain. And if you are keen to stick some ETH to get some BETH or BEF, I have left a link in the description down below where you can sign up with Hopi and you can stick your Ether to get beef or B Ether. I got no idea what it's going to be called yet, but it is what it is. And for the rest of us, um, there's no need to do anything else unless you're looking to trade in and out of the markets for some quick gains. And by now, most of the exchanges will have probably stopped deposits or withdrawal of ETH 
just to safeguard your tokens in an event of instability. But personally, I think the burning of Ethereum will actually help the token price quite a bit because right now, um, Ethereum does not have a cap at all, unlike Bitcoin, which is stuck at 21 million. And if the burn rate is faster than the generation rate of Ethereum, um, this will increase the demand for ETH on the network and definitely pushing up the prices. And to be frank, I was not a firm believer of Ethereum because there was no burn system in it, but now I'm kind of late into the game. But I'm looking to build up some Ethereum to hold and probably will do some staking to earn beef as well. So today's video is kind of short. Um, it's something that I just want to jump in immediately because I was just reading about it today. Um, do smash a like button, it helps the channel quite a bit. Subscribe if you haven't. And I'll see you in the next video. This fork. This fork. It's a nice fork.